Okay, then, Nick, let's talk expectations for the U.S. women's national team at the World Cup. Can they get a three-peat? That is the main focus. Of course, they'll be the first ever men's or women's team to do it if they can pull it off. Can they do it? They're on the easier side of the bracket. I've been looking at this, studying where they can fall if they win their group, Nick, and it looks like it's all slotted into place quite nicely with the draw for the USA women's team. But we've mentioned it before. They've got a lot of big absentees or injuries, a lot of players who are talented but playing in their first World Cup. Can they do it, mate? What do you think? I think they can. Uh, and what really buoyed my confidence here is I had a chance to discuss um, the upcoming tournament with Kelly O'Hara, who's obviously been there, as, as you like to say, been there, done that one, wore, wore the T-shirt, bought the T-shirt, whatever you say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and the way that she discussed it, I had asked her a question about you know, winning three straight World Cups that no one had ever done it in any gender, anything it just hasn't been done. And her reaction was, you know, yeah, but we've we've made history. But like, yes, there's pressure. Yes, we haven't done it before, but we've already, you know, secured our legacy. Like, we're we'd like to secure more legacy. <laughs> but the way that she spoke about it made me realize between you know the coach who hasn't won a World Cup and, and those young players who haven't been there and these players who are know they can etch their names into history. There's the pressure doesn't seem to phase them because they're so used to the pressure. It's something I think we've seen from so many of the men's superpowers at World Cup, where just making the team is so hard that once you're there, there's a little bit of house money, right? Um, when you are a player like Kelly O'Hara or a player like even Megan Rapino, and you still, when you get that call from coach about the roster, there's still that little bit inside you that's like, yeah, but maybe he'll say no. I think, you know what I mean? I think, I don't want to say the pressure's off because you have a whole nation on you, but I think the pressure of making this team has become just so important, so big that it's almost like, all right, well, now I'm here. Let's just go win a World Cup. Yeah. I mean, and let's be honest, they dominate the World Cup. The, the last time they actually lost the game at the World Cup was in the group stage in 2011. So obviously, you know, winning back to back and um, it, it's just pretty sensational. Uh, when you think about the achievement that the majority of this team, there's, there's, you know, like a few players missing through injury, but we talk about Alex Morgan, Rapino, Julia, uh, obviously Lindsay Oran, uh, Rose Lavelle as well, leading this team. These are leaders and players who are stepping up all the time whenever the US needs them and you can rely on them. And then you'd be putting all the other pieces of players emerging and, and talented players that have, kind of been thrust into the team through injury situations for this World Cup. <clears throat> I'm really excited because I think it's like, a, it's it's kind of a dynasty, right? But then it's that new twist and it's almost, you know, thinking back to, I don't know, when the Chicago Bulls, when they were winning all the time and they just added a few superstar players into the core uh, all the time. Um, and I feel like that's where we're at. Um, this is a dynasty, obviously. And it feels like they're in a good place when it comes to, uh, going for the three P. I'm not saying it's not going to be difficult. It's going to be, I think, the most difficult um, out of all of their World Cup successes because, as you mentioned before, this, the women's game is more stacked with genuine contenders than it ever has been. So, um, for this team to do it, um, they're going to have to do it in a totally different way than the last couple of World Cups. But I'm really excited because you know it, it has been tough. The road to get there has been tough. Injuries to Becky Sauber on the captain, Swanson. Obviously, Macario, Sam Mewis being out as well. Those are some big-time players that the U.S. is going to be missing. So when you look at that, though, who are the breakout players on this team? Who do you expect to, to make a big splash and become the next American hero uh, for the U.S. women's national team? Yeah, I was ready to bet on Kat Macario being that breakout player. And, and that's kind of one of the things that has been so interesting. And, and you mentioned Mallory Swanson as well. These are names that I thought would become household names. And instead, we're looking at... Um, again, a last name, another person I had the, the good fortune to speak to over the past month was Trinity Rodman. And yeah. while we, we, we tried, yeah, we try not to discuss her last name, but she brought it up to me. She said she's been bearing the weight of pressure her entire life because some people judge her based on her last name. Some people judge her based on being the number one overall pick. Um, and she kind of raised this to me. So this is something that's been on her mind. She carries with her and, they say there, there are few young players as professional and as driven as her. And so she's she's kind of the easy one to bet on. Um, however, there's a huge opening at the back as well because of Becky Sauerbrunn not being there. Perhaps my favorite player of all time, right? This sort of player who 
slides in there as captain and just delivers the goods time and time again. So as you, Joe, you've mentioned before, there are players at the back who could become household names by virtue, whether they, whether it's chipping in on a set piece goal, because we know the U.S. is very adventurous in that way, or just standing tall in front of a listener or whoever might be in between the sticks. Yeah, I mean, Gerber's one to watch out, right? Coming in, going to fill the shoes of Becky Salbram, but a very talented defender. Sophia Smith as well is someone that um, is going to be a star, I think, after this World Cup and already is. So um, a couple of breakout players to watch out for there. As I said, it might, the, the kind of brackets opened up, but it's almost a bit tough early on for the US, you would say. Um, I mean, in the group stage, they play against a, a very tough Dutch side. I mean, the Netherlands, obviously, they... They beat them in the World Cup final last time. A different team with Serena Wiegmann uh, leaving for England. Uh, had a few struggles in recent years, but that's going to tell us quite early on where this US team is at. And I think it's actually quite a good thing in the tournament, isn't it? Because to have almost a group stage uh, game, that, that that is the knockout stage game pretty much, right? In the groups. And I think that's going to be helpful for this quite young team. And then I was looking again at the who they could face Um Sweden, Norway, Japan, coming up against some superstar players there early on in the knockout rounds. I feel like the U.S. is going to have to come flying out the traps and and be at their best from the start. I know they want to be at their best every single game, but usually you can ease yourself into a tournament a little bit. But it's going to be some good, really strong tests for the USA early on. Yeah, and I think the injury to Sauerbrunn makes it more interesting too, because you just need – this has not been, at least in recent months – a U.S. team that is piling up four, five, six goals a game and just destroying teams. They're winning games 2 nothing, one nothing, 2-1. Uh, and defending has been key. But when you look at that setup, it just takes one good game from Ada for Norway, um, one good game from Japan, from Sweden, who are teams they could face in the knockouts, to really, I don't want to say surprise the U.S., but to open things up in a way that, that, makes, that puts them on their heels. And I look at some of their Olympic failings over the past few cycles, and that's what it's taken, is somebody surprising them, coming up ahead or delivering a, a top performance and saying, all right, now you come back and get it. And then when we lean back, can we get the ball to Alex Morgan? Um, can we can we find our players in promising phase? Can, can Lindsey Horan drive an equalizer or a winner from the midfield? That's what it's going to be. But I also think the U.S. is going to be on the front foot from the opening moments, and they have the firepower to score early. Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting. So, of course, all of the focus and expectations for the U.S. Women's National Team is it always is the World Cup is to win it. But this is very special. They're going for the three-peat, something that's never been done in the men's or women's game in the history of the World Cup. So they're going to have the entire nation behind them. And as we said, a lot of new faces, a lot of experienced uh, heads who have been there, done that, got the T-shirt and won the trophy, Nick. Um, so we are going to... Um, I think have some really interesting storylines swirling around the U.S. women's national teams this summer. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk and NBCSports.com. That on her turf team will have you covered as well. And of course, you can watch all the action in Spanish in the USA on Telemundo and on Peacock. Can't wait to see how the USA perform at the Women's World Cup. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.